Hello, Scruff Tords, the occasional Vatnik, and all you beautiful, weird, and strange individuals that roam the internet. Welcome to Warzone. I'm Scruffy, and this is Scruffy Tales. And we're gonna take a look at where Ukraine is advancing in Kursk. Uh, uh, they are isolating Russians in an important little village. They have pushed up into territory that was believed to be controlled by uh, Russia outside of Veseloya, of all places, in the Glushkova district. So stick around for that one. And uh, they are sending in uh, dragon drones to drop hellfire on Russians from above in a region where we don't really know what the hell is going on outside of Tetkino. Uh, so, uh, and of course, Russia has made some gains as well, that has to be said, and we'll uh, look into all of it. So, uh, let's do that. Right, so we're testing something new. I'm actually recording my first video with my brand new microphone. We'll see how this works out. Uh, this is my map, map of the Kursk incursion. I take a look at ISW, Andrew Perpetua, Noel Report, Steep State, Ukraine Control Map, Mayakovsk 73, and the Blackbird Group's map, and uh, kind of guesstimate what they are all saying, uh, since no map is the same, and you kind of have to uh, make up your own mind where the action is actually taking place, and what I'm doing with my map is this, if we zoom in, as you can see, uh, I try and map out where you can actually hold terrain and where you can uh, defend terrain, right? So where other mappers, for obvious reasons, draw a straight line across a field because that's the <laughs> easy way to do it. Uh, adjusting front lines, doing what I'm doing, takes a whole lot of time. So I fully understand why the others don't do it. Uh, but I do it just for fun. and. Um, as you can see, I try and uh, keep wide open fields uh, unmarked to show that this is territory you can't defend, this is territory you, you cannot hold, and this means you can figure out where you have points of contact and where it's difficult to support certain sections of the front line as well, and which parts of the front line that are exposed. So that's my map, and I take a look at all the other mappers and, you know, make my own stuff with it and a bunch of stuff has happened in Kursk if we zoom in down here at Borki uh, we a couple of weeks ago uh, Russia made a big push across this field uh, doubtful how far they got or uh, rather uh, they claim to have reached this far uh, which is doubtful uh, but now we have what it appears to be confirmation that they have secured territory out in the field, which suggests this patch of woods here, uh, this valley out in the fields, and maybe even uh, the trees here along the main road leading into ta the town of Plekovo. So if Russia is holding territory here south of Plekovo, as seems to be confirmed, it is these three places. Uh, and this one is a bit unsure, but this valley, uh, this is where they can actually hold and defend territory. So without a doubt, if it's confirmed that they're south of Plekovo, it is here that they are operating. Uh, what else has happened? Uh, Russia has uh, pushed out from Kremanoye into these valleys and windbreaks here. Uh, threatening this part of the Ukrainian line. Uh, it's very exposed. Uh, we'll see how if Ukraine can hold on to the woods here, considering how narrow the uh, supply line is. Uh, what else? Well, of Novoyevnovka, obviously. Um, Ukraine pushed out of Leonidovo into Novoyevnovka. We've seen video videos of Abrams and Bradleys fighting in this town against Russian positions. And we also saw from Noel reports that in Selenishliak, uh, Russians had been surrounded and cut off. And I'm guessing if those reports are true, uh, I'm thinking it's this farm here. Uh, here is uh, the village, Selenishliak. And if Russians 
are cut off and uh, surrounded, it would probably be here in this town and in these woods where Ukraine can come in this way and occupy territory between the village and the farm, right? So if there is some truth to it, uh, it's Ru Russians are either trapped in this farm here or maybe in the buildings over here and in the woods, right? So that's what's going on over here, if there's any truth to uh, those reports. Also, if we take a look at Mayakovsk 73, take a look. A lot of action taking place here in and around uh, Selenishliak out in the fields along the roads and uh, also between Yubimovka and Selenishliak. A lot of combat, vehicles moving back and forth, drones and artillery being used. Uh, so this is a hot spot. This is where everything is happening at the moment in Kursk, the main battle. Uh, right here uh, uh, between the way of and Selinishliak. Uh, back to my map. Uh, what else? Not much else over here. <coughs> uh, no, we're gonna move over here actually. Uh, just a quick one. Uh, Dragon drones have been used by Ukraine against Russian positions over here. Uh, what that means unclear we just know that drones have been dropping uh, fire from above on russian positions in this area um, uh, the other day we saw evidence that ukraine had tried to cross the border here moving along the windbreaks here uh, and they uh, were countered with russian artillery uh, it's a bit unclear if they have established a foothold or if russia pushed them back uh, but all in all, we are seeing uh, more and more hints, maybe not uh, confirmation, but hints at least, that Ukraine is trying to isolate Wolfino coming up around this way, because this road here is the only road leading into Wolfino and Krasnetabrisky that the Russians can use for logistics to support these two towns uh, in holding the front line here on the border. Uh, so it appears at least as if Ukraine is trying to isolate these two towns so that they can grab them and uh, once that is done then renew their efforts into pushing deeper into Glushkovo district. Uh, but as you can see over here we have something interesting. Uh, I've marked this as uh, neutral, as contested uh, because we have had evidence that, the, was it yesterday? Uh, Ukrainian vehicles were moving up here. Um, I'll return here to Mayakovsk. No, not Mayakovsk. Here we go. Ukraine control map. That's right. R that blue dot is from the 21st of October. And uh, it is a Ukrainian vehicle hit east of Veseloya uh, Kursk. Uh, Veseloya East. And yeah, it was hit as it was moving. I believe it was moving northward towards what this is, uh, appears to be a pig farm. <laughs> Imagine getting the orders sent. Your orders are to take and hold a pig farm. Mmm, no, how about I charge some trenches instead? No, nope, you're gonna attack the pig farm. Uh, so, I mean, the Ukrainians managed to get this far somehow. And that's why I'm thinking this area here is not under Russian control if the Ukrainians managed to push up this way. Uh, Russia has probably gained some territory over here, uh, but it does appear as if Ukraine has managed to found, find a, found a way to move up through these fields all the way up here, which suggests that maybe they are in control of the windbreaks here and uh, can cross these fields with relative safety, doesn't it? Very interesting, we'll have to wait and see if that was just a one-off or if that is something more permanent that Ukraine can operate south of this pig farm. <laughs> I mean, they're in the middle of the war and they have to fight in pig shit. Ah, war is hell. Uh, so yeah, that is the situation at the moment ukraine appears to be moving uh, northward here 
uh, still operating east of Veseloy. And over here at Novoivanovka, we appear to have Ukrainians pushing into Slinishliak, isolating Russians over here in this farm. And we have the uh, we have Ukrainians with Abrams and Bradleys moving westward through Novoivanovka. Uh, and it appears as if Russia is struggling at the moment in holding the line in this uh, small town. Uh, at the same time, Russia has had some successes up here and uh, appears to also have managed to occupy a couple of vital locations out in these open fields south of Plekovo. And that is... Well, that's all I have for you. That's what I think is worth reporting on uh, from Kursk at the moment. And before... I end the video. I just, I just want to highlight something. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, I like to try and predict things along the front line. And I have a pretty decent track record. I am pretty accurate when I pre in, my, in my predictions. I sometimes predict stuff that happens a couple of days later, uh, sometimes a couple of weeks later, and at times even a couple of months later on. Uh, what I predicted actually end, uh, ends up happening. Uh, and I'm kind of proud of it. And it just so happens that a couple of days ago, I predicted stuff in Ukraine, or in Kursk, I should say, uh, that then ended up happening. Right, so in this video from a couple of days ago, four days ago, uh, hang on, let's see here. On the 19th, yeah, that's right, I recorded this uh, on the 18th of October. And it crossed over to uh, the 19th, uh, around midnight, when I was recording this. And I'm explaining here what Ukraine needs to do to prevent Russia further to further advance into their territory. And they need to take Novo Ivanovka and Selene Shliak. So I'm saying they need to abandon these three towns up here. And uh, because of this narrow choke point where, where it's difficult to move through logistics. So they have to abandon the three towns of Vetreno, Olgovka and uh, Durovka, right? And what they need to do then is to uh, contain and maintain this narrow bulge that the Russians have secured. And this will give the Ukrainians the opportunity to counterattack into Novo Ivanovka. Uh, here I'm showing what the Russians would like uh, because then it's easy to supply Novo Ivanovka. And the Ukrainians, they really need to maintain that bulge with a presence north and south uh, to deny Russia a steady flow of supplies and resources and manpower into Novo Ivanovka. And uh, let's see if we can jump ahead a bit. And yeah, I'm just emphasizing the point here. And if Ukraine pulls this off in holding the line north of Novo Ivanovka and south, it then gives Ukraine the ability to uh, counterattack through Leonidivo into Novo Ivanovka and take a look along the highway with a mechanized assault, right? Towards Selene Shliak. And I said this on the 18th, and yeah, maybe even some support along the main highway there from uh, Kryglin uh, Koe. Uh, but this is what I said on the 18th of October, and ended up finishing the recording on the 19th and uh, posting it on the uh, 19th. A couple of days ahead of some uh, important events in Kursk. And uh, if we take some help here from uh, Mayakovsk 73 and his map, <clears throat> take a look what happened here. A couple of days after I made that recording, Ukraine fell back from Vetrino, Olgolka, and Dorov uh, Dorovka. They <laughs> fell back, just like I said. And Ukraine held on to this territory up here maintaining that bulge, securing that Russia had not free access with supplies, manpower, into Novo Ivanovka. And then, 
one or two days after that, Ukraine launched an assault through Leonodivo into Nova Ivanovka. And also take a look at all the armor coming up along this road. Mechanized assault towards Selenishliak. And potentially now some Russians isolated in the eastern part of this small village. Uh, so yeah, uh, predictions. I make them and I'm pretty spot on. I have a very decent track record so far uh, and I'm kind of proud of it. So there we have it, the first video with the new microphone. I hope uh, it's to everyone's enjoyment without the beep beep beeps. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, tra predictions. I make them. I, I mean, eventually, uh, I'm gonna mess things up uh, royally. But uh, I haven't really so far. Uh, well, Turetsk. I was dead wrong about Turetsk. I'll admit that. Uh, I thought they were gonna uh, do an encirclement, and instead Russia decided to go straight through town. And well, now they're stuck. So you know, it's Russia. Russia doing Russian things. Um, yeah, Turetsk, I was wrong about Turetsk. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I mean, uh, tactically, operationally, and even strategically, I've been spot on uh, for about a year now. Uh, and I'm damn proud of it. Uh, but yeah, so uh, anyway, that's enough of uh, that. Uh, that's all I have for you this time around. As always, go to Marsh, Ukraine, and give them hell.